Hello, welcome to Open Social's webinar. What's next? The Open Social product roadmap for Q4 and beyond. First, I have here some little agenda to discuss kind of what our product strategy is before Moritz is going to take over and tell you more about it. First, we're going to discuss the goals. What do we want to reach as a product? Then we're going to discuss some processes. How are we creating our roadmap and where you can find an update? Then we will move forward to the Q4 roadmap. There we'll discuss the core development, the extensions, and everything you will find in the next three months on your platform. Then we'll discuss more of the long-term plan. Where are we going to, where we're heading in 2021 and what is decoupled exactly and how it will change the open social platforms. We will end it with a nice Q&A. And um, I'll give the floor now to Moritz, uh, as he'll be the star of the show. Thank you, Jamila, for the introduction. Uh, great to see you, everyone. Um, thanks for joining. It's uh, awesome to see that there are so many people um, interested in what we have planned. Um, so, I, uh, as Jamila said, I really, uh, really want to start with a, a quick introduction of our general goals. Um, so, as you know, there's a lot happening in open social, um, also structurally. Um, we are trying to expand um, uh, our team. We uh, we got the funding at the beginning of the year. With that comes obviously also the plan of um, of, of more defining uh, um, on our own, own terms. Where, where do we want to go? What's the direction we want to take? Um, and um, it, so I want to share a bit the ideas from uh, Brahma, our new CTO, also not that new anymore. It's already like a year that he's... <laughs> The Citiano for Open Social um, that we developed over the last month, and where we want to go with that. So, there are three like general things that we see as really relevant and that we see as our um, goals uh, like as on, on on top of of all the decisions that we're making. And this is a that uh, Open Social has to be future proof. So we want to make sure that Open Social can grow with any technological challenges that will come. Um, it should be variable and adaptable. So we want to make it um, flexible for site managers. We want to make it flexible for different use cases, but we also want to make it the techno technology behind it uh, adaptable. So with decoupled with um, a, a good UX with accessibility, all of those parts that, that come with it. Um, the second part is uh, that we want to make Open Social a trusted hub so that in open social is often in, in scenarios that it's used not per se the final endpoint. It can be, for example, for discussion platforms or for ideation platforms. But oftentimes it's a it's a gateway through more to more information to more um, tools that people use in the general context. And for this, we also want to be able to to easily connect open social to different tools that are already used in a certain context in a certain ecosystem of our clients so um, we are working on uh, on on better api integrations on more um, on webhook system and so forth so i will go deeper into what we are doing in that regard um, later on in this presentation another point is that we really want to define um, like how we can add value to the client, to our client's community. So a lot of people work with these communities, communities and, and um, there's, there's, it, it's, it's always, always like, like obviously, obviously that everybody, everybody has to justify, justify why, why does community exist, exist? Why, why do we, we um, why, why are we making certain choices, choices to implement this feature? feature? Why, why is this an extension? An extension? So, so, and for us, it should be clear, clear like when we add something, something, when we do something, why are we doing this? What does, what's the value, the added value for you as a, as a client of Open Social, as somebody who is working in a community management aspect or in a site management aspect or as a communication specialist? So, um, really, we, uh, I see a few things, and it doesn't have to be like, direct monetary value that, that is obviously an option, but also um, how can, how does it foster knowledge? How does it foster communication? How um, create does it create more brand loyalty or so? So like that we really define like, why do we add this as an extension and how can you profit from it? Um, before we go into the actual details, I also want to talk a bit about the processes. So we had some different tools, we had Pando, we had uh, some other things. So I wanted to give a quick overview, just a few minutes about the processes, how we're going to plan to uh, create the roadmap and uh, what, what 
the, the uh, overall strategy there is. So um, we obviously still want to keep uh, gathering input um, and uh, the backlog for the features that we're developing and for issues that we want to try to tackle is uh, constantly evolving. So uh, it's usually a bit about three fronts. So where do we see that we want to grow towards? Where do we see improvement within the current concept? And um, what are things our client needs? So from those three positions on, we uh, we maintain a backlog and we want to, um, yeah, so we, we try to really focus on JIRA, have all the processes there um, and um, also want to make this process more quantified. So we are working with the RISE uh, prioritization module, which determines the value of an item based on how many people are using it, how big will the impact be for people that use it, and so forth. Um, for everybody who is interested, I also added a link in the slide. I will not go into the details what it is. Um, we found it to be very interesting. So it's a, a prioritization uh, tool developed by Intercom. And um, if you want to look it up, I posted a link there and a bit of explanation. So um, check, check it out if you're interested in it. Um, so, but that's very important for us to make it quantifiable and to to, to um, uh, also have the whole team of open social included in that, and also the client perspectives in that. And to have the client perspective really also represented. Um, so we used Pendo in the past. This will be closed for us because uh, for several reasons we see that the maintenance effort on our side is really high. It creates a sort of shadow documentation as we per internally work in JIRA. And um, it also not serving our, our purposes really well. Um, and I think also the clients, your purposes not really well. So we want to transform a lot of the communication in JIRA or in community talks. And I think that this can be really an important communication tool because A, it's going to help um, really uh, uh, streamline the discussions on, on one tool, on a tool that everybody knows, and on um, something where also all the documentation and we will, where we also can post uh, roadmaps, open discussions about it and things like that. So there in the future will be also a lot of, um, lot of documentation and communication and uh, Jamila is going to tell, tell a bit more about the community talk strategy. Yes, um, so I hope you're all aware and on community talks. So we've really now focused on like minimizing tools with also Pendo and also now with sharing emails regarding um, the releases and so forth. So we're really now hoping to focus more on community talks that everyone's also aware how kind of how to use it because it's an open social platform. So in there now we created a new group which is called the Open Social Product Roadmap Group um, where we'll invite all community managers also to join where we'll share kind of the roadmap um, but also share open discussions where you can post about it, ask questions. Um, if you have some feature requests or feature questions, uh, also in the future, you can ask there. But we really kind of still want to be transparent and clear and have a clear overview of where like Hope and Social is like heading and going and what uh, features you can find in the future on your platform. Um, this will also make it very easier so you don't have to open Pendo and so forth. Uh, so everything will be in one place where you can find the guide, you can find the roadmap, you can find the new releases, uh, you can ask questions, you can share experiences, you can share, talk together as community managers of Open Social. So really creating like one hub where you can find all the information, everything you need to know about Open Social. Um, so yeah, so this is the group we created also as of today. So uh, afterwards, um, we'll invite you to join. You can also join yourself. It's an open group. Um, we're also keeping it quite public. Uh, so it's, we are very transparent and we hope to stay that way also. Um, there are also tags, which are product and strategy that you can look at where we'll always tag stuff when we share any, any topics regarding that. Um, so this will also make it easier for you, um, make it kind of a one-stop shop. So um, this is kind of where we're heading then with community talks. Thanks, Jamila. So Jamila will be really also your contact point on community talks. Um, she She's in the charge of the content there about the strategy, but also really making sure that all communication, all blogs and everything like this is really up to date and uh, integrated in the process. So as soon as a new feature is going to be out, there's going to be documentation about it. Uh, you can ask questions there and, and so forth. So we really try to put all the communication there and also keep it up to date and, and, and topical about what, what what's happening currently. 
Um, if there are any questions at any point, by the way, um, so as Jamila said, at the end, we're going to have a, a Q&A. If it's directly connected to anything that you see here, uh, you can also shout in between or ask a question maybe in the chat. Jamila uh, can monitor that a bit. Um, as I promised, the uh, right prioritization here, um, I don't want to go too much, uh, too much into the processes. It counts also for everything else that I'm seeing, that you're seeing here. We are not going too much into depth. So I think I did the product uh, presentation for the teams in almost two hours. So there is a lot to cover. Um, it, you can see it as sort of launch pad for, um, uh, you all have your contact points for, for, for your project. So if you see anything, we're also gonna share the, the slides afterwards. So if you see anything you wanna have more information on, A, you can ask questions afterwards or B, contact somebody at Open Social and they can really walk you through it, also show some examples. I didn't. I didn't include any work examples, designs, or anything with that with that presentation now. So if you want to see that, please contact somebody at Open Social that can help you with that. Um, so the first thing we want to cover uh, for the roadmap is core and then the extensions. I split it really like that. So the core part is what's going to come um, ideally with the 10.0 release beginning of next year. So somewhere um, beginning of next year and then onwards uh, with with the rollout through through different projects. Um, it, uh, all of those features that we're going to cover here um, will find its way in some way to, to the core product. The extensions will be separate as usual, going to cover that in a bit. So um, again, here also to cover a bit the goals of, the, of um, where we want to focus this quarter on. Uh, for, for the core product, it's um, really a, for us about uh, creating a stable, secure, feature-rich environment. Um, we want to um, connect with the open source community. Um, so uh, we have a strong group of background and that's going to be important for us also in the future. And we also still want to focus on that. Um, that means, for example, making a future proof with uh, including a Drupal 9 support, but also focusing on a few high value Drupal features. Um, Another, another thing we really think is important is next to, as I said, the point of introducing new features, we really also want to focus on existing features and how we can complete those, how we can improve those. So you will see a few of the items there um, that, that will focus on existing features and tackling pain points that we experience and that we get from feedback back. So uh, again, the, the roadmap is going to be split in a... Um, uh, the, the core and infrastructure part, and the second part will be a sponsored part. So um, we work with a lot of people together, uh, and uh, also there is a lot of input uh, at all from from the community, and there is uh, a lot of collaboration in there. So as you can see, I hope you can also see that with uh, 60 people joining today, that there is uh, quite a community behind it. Um, unfortunately, a few people can't, can't make it even. So I hope this also is going to be an incentive to be active on, on community talks. As you can see, there are a lot of other people who have their own open social installations. Um, but from those collaborations, obviously, also come features that are sponsored, that are co-developed, partially sponsored, or in a in a in a conceptual uh, um, collaboration developed, and I, I split those separately. So it's also a bit to see like how much of those collaboration comes. Um, so I'm just gonna walk through this on a main theme base and uh, point out some of the highlights here on uh, on the actual roadmap. And um, as I said, especially for the core product, um, the development part, when we're going to develop it, is actually not when it's going to be released. So all of this lock will only come beginning of next year. For the extensions, this is a bit different, so we can talk about this in a bit. Um, so one of the parts we will focus on is uh, flexible groups as default. Um, so there are a few things we want to set as default where we come to realize that it makes more sense than uh, original approaches or that it's going to improve on original pro processes. And one of this is going to have a quite a big impact in the future. For now, it's just a precursor of getting it ready to that. So the long-term um, concept for the groups is that we will phase out or want to phase out at least uh, those preset groups that we have. So at the moment you have closed, open and um, public groups. And um, the plan is uh, in the midterm to, to remove those group types and 
do everything about over the flexible groups. Um, that means that the flexible groups will be the starting point. There's going to be a preset in this groups, um, but all the variables can be then set by the group creator. And that being said, we are also having in this concept ideas about uh, the site managers being able, able to set, uh, set presets that users can choose from, but those will be a bit different as they will be technically still a flexible group, but um, like uh, taxonomy types or ev uh, like event types, uh, topic types, they will be um, a categorization item rather than architectural choice of a group name. This has a lot of advantages. It will um, make the maintenance on our side easier, but it will also make the system way more flexible on the site manager side because a flexible group is always the same group type. So if you switch during the process, if you realize, oh, the closed group doesn't work for this group, we want to switch it to an open group, you can just do it. It's just an added setting in the, uh, in the, in the form of the, of the group. Uh, instead of creating a whole new group, because now you have to move all of the content to, to the other group type. So it will make it more flexible, but that also needs uh, an improvement of the current flexible group score. And that's what we're going to focus on this sprint, because the process, how the settings are made currently at the flexible groups is a bit um, technical. It's not really understandable. There are some options missing that we do in the preset groups, and obviously we want to reach if we switch that feature parity with it. So this is going to be the main focus point here that we really want to make a really nice user-friendly group creation form as uh, so that actually when we switch to from, from the preset groups to flexible groups, that people are seeing it as an improvement, not something that we take away from them. Um, that will also include some uh, group design improvements. For example, like, um, uh, the labels will be, we, we will improve um, at the moment, they say flexible group, open group, closed group, which doesn't really mean anything. So we're going to work on how it can be categorized, how it can be made clear what the presets are and what the chosen set, sets are, what the options are of creating content um, and, and which, which uh, visibilities you can give that. So that would be one part uh, the core team is focusing on. Um, I'm going to skip the private and automation part because it's really a more internal ar architectural part. And in the end, it means more stable, <coughs> excuse me, more stable and um, uh, more stable and faster releases for everyone. So that would be basically the outcome there. Uh, just a quick check up, Jamila. We are recording, right? Because I can't see any recording. Um, yes, it's there's no recording anymore on Google Hangout. I think they removed it again, oh, so I'm just recording okay. my whole screen. So. Okay, good, thanks. <laughs> um, so then, as I mentioned, another part of the core process is the Drupal 9 compatibility. We are already in the core process of making Drupal core, uh, of social core Drupal, uh, Drupal 9 compatible. This will be uh, finished. And the original plan was also to have all extensions and all contract modules that we are using Drupal 9 ready. This will unfortunately not happen this, so this, this, run, uh, this quarter, sorry. So this will be an ongoing process in quarter one, um, 2021, maybe even quarter two. So while you can be sure that we are working on it, it's not something that we're gonna switch to or up, update to very soon. I think the general plan will be there after quarter two, 2021. I'm going to talk a bit about this more in the, in the outro part of the presentation. But uh, currently ongoing process here. In the context um, of removing more pain points in the core, um, so one of the older parts of the platform are the content forms, and um, we want to set out to start improving those. So we know that, uh, for example, node creation, uh, topic, event creation can be a bit tricky. That's partially because it's uh, one of the oldest features, one of the first things we built, um, and we just added things and more functionality, having a full day event, having a, um, a maximum number of event creators, having a topic types and so forth. And that's like an organic growth that happened over the years which is normal with such a big uh, project and ongoing uh, product as open social. But that means also that, that from time to time, you have to take a step back and look at the finished organic product you have now and think like, is that really a good strategy? Is that a good concept? So we're gonna 
do this uh, step back. We're going to try to do this again. I'm going to also refer back to that later in the output session. We're going to do this step by step through the whole product. And um, one of the things we're going to focus now is the forms and see if we can make it more user friendly, more logical, and a bit easier to comprehend. At the moment, we throw a lot of information at the first sight on all of those creation forms on people. And we're going to try to reduce the amount of information and um, add more information if people ask for it. For example, creating a maximum um, number of enrollees, and then you get all the settings for this. So um, that's what's uh, for now for the core um, on the core team. And then um, the enterprise team is working also on quite a few core issues there. And that is a bit more, so as you can see, usually the split is internal and the back end. We are working a bit more for the back end, for the client, for the smaller things, adding a few improvements, improving features. And then we have other teams working more on really feature related um, uh, parts. So one of the things um, that we are working together with the UN, but also with uh, Zim together is the accessibility. So there are this uh, WCAGAA standards. Um, there are 50 uh, points uh, you have to fulfill and comply to if you want to uh, fulfill those standards. So those WCAGAA standards are really um, generally accepted guidelines. That is very important to keep in mind that they are guidelines. Not It's not a, like a checkbox where you can say, yes, we have that because it's a objective test, but some of them are also discussable and there are some problems not social that is user generated content. So for example, um, for some color, uh, color contrast points, you cannot guarantee this. You cannot say like, yes, we are complying to it because if a client uploads an image that's a white image on, under a white text, we can try to prevent it by having certain um, certain uh, mechanisms for this. But in the end, there might be scenarios where things are not really the contrast that is needed to fulfill this guy. But that being said, um, also and, uh, here shout out to Sim that uh, like. Uh, created uh, an uh, opportunity for us to do, do a testing. We have a result from that. We are working already quite um, intensely on that, having a retest now end of October and planning in the second round of improvements there. So we have the plan at least that until end of December, we can say that at least we are um, compliant in like 84 of those 50 points. Uh, as we said, two of those points are a bit arguably, if we can achieve them also from Drupal side, but that means at least that um, we are doing everything that is possible from our side to comply with to those guidelines for, which is important for all, I think government funded or um, general people uh, platforms where there is contact with people who have um, disabilities in some form or have difficulties uh, accessing those platforms. Um, another part that we're working together with the UN is to improve, improve the management dashboard. Currently you have a KPI dashboard that is by default set as it's set. We are improving this on um, to include it in the dashboard functionality, which is an extension, but we also improving the default KPI dashboard. So it will be more flexible in how you can set it up. It will improve uh, what statistics you can view and how you can drill down to this statistics. So it will be really about focusing on screen in the community statistics that we can give to community managers and site managers to see the the health of their community, the growth of their community, and also have detailed insight, for example, based on certain taxonomies, so that you can see how well is my community doing in the taxonomy A compared to taxonomy B. Is there way more engagement in taxonomy B instead of A, or, or, or things, things like that? Um, so this is definitely, uh, I think, a point that, that is kind of still missing there, where we are uh, really starting to close the gap, uh, which I'm really excited about. Uh, another another feature that's going to be added in the in the uh, core will be uh, in between role for a tech, uh, as a taxonomy manager. So this will be basically a community manager that is limited towards a certain topic area of the platform. So we see a lot that um, communities are centered around certain topics, so that you have certain taxonomies that are really um, separated from other taxonomies uh, from other taxonomies and creating like certain islands of expertise within the community. 
I think that's a normal way how communities um, communities communities uh, develop around certain areas, um, and we want to facilitate this by giving uh, the opportunity to allow. Um, a creation of a role that really focuses on those different areas of expertise so that uh, taxonomy manager A has access to all relevant items for taxonomy A, but not to taxonomy B. So this allows to give out more rights to different people without giving them access to areas where they shouldn't be involved or cannot be involved. Last point here um, for the core is the media initiative. So we are focusing a bit more on um, adding media. So you're going to see this also back in the extension part. Um, there's going to be an album feature which will be added to groups and to profiles where people can upload uh, or gather images they already uploaded. Um, there will be multiple images uploaded for, uh, for streams. And, and there will be a possibility to add this in different albums. Uh, it will get a dedicated tab. People can look at this, then um, switch through it, leave comments on, on separate posts there. Um, and uh, yeah, it, uh, it will improve in general the, the, the way how you can find media back, but also how, um, how it is presented in, in, on all sessions. So that's so far the um, core part. Um, we're going to go now to the extensions. So um, as you all know, there are certain extensions that allow the product to be specified, uh, to be really um, get, uh, get, get a certain um, focus on specific aspects, uh, be it maybe courses, maybe collaboration, maybe um, uh, Crowd innovation or challenges, uh, maybe discussions and so forth. Right. So um, those extensions are usually not relevant for all types of communities, but um, really try to make a split there, not by um, by oh what what can we upsell, but what would um, overload the community. Right. It's also important to make those choices to make it possible that core the core stays usable for everyone and not that you have. Uh, 15 different interaction points on your own, own menu where only three are used. So I think in the community, every every tab for on your own profile should be filled with things and not should have a challenge, a course, a discussion, which you all don't use. So that's why we chose for a lot of things here that, um, that we think is really specialized for certain communities. And all of those extensions, um, yeah, should, should serve as I said, a certain goal within a certain vertical, within a certain specialization area of a community. Um, we're going to try to, uh, yeah, as I said, develop extensions that um, help open source to be more specific and to give a better niche fit for certain communities. And as I mentioned before, we really want to help uh, with those extensions to generate really value, to drive um, home a certain point to get uh, to to say like yeah the community does this and adds the value to our company in that way. Um, so well, one of the first thing is still an extension, but is going to be moved to the core. So I probably should have better included it in the core roadmap because after this um, this quarter, we want to make sure that the Sky team is the new default theme. I think in the 90% of the cases, it is already the case, but there is uh, the point that we that we are slowly facing out our old theme um, and really want to move to this. Uh, there, it has some technical reasons. It has some design reasons. Um, and um, I, I, yeah, we think that this is the way forward. Um, again, I'm going to switch the primate and uh, uh, skip the primate and automation part, um, and uh, going to go to webhooks and gamification. So this is a bit connected, and this is, I think, one of the biggest things that we're going to work on this sprint. And the webhook uh, architecture is something that is um, the foundation for a lot of things that we're going to tackle. So um, it's going to have uh, basically four different implementations, which is onboarding, data layer, engagement automation, and leaderboard. So that we're working together with Greenpeace on that. So also a lot of uh, thanks to Greenpeace for investing in this and helping us to grow here. And I think it's going to add a lot of value in all of those regards. 
So what we'll do is we'll help um, to give certain connection points to Open Social where you can hook in and get the data out to serve your community and to um, to to uh, monitor or interact with certain interactions that the user can do. So I'm gonna it's gonna be a bit clearer when I go into the implementations. Um, and one of them is going to be on, um, like the engagement automation, we call it, and it's basically a rule. Uh, it's a rule-based system where, based on those webhook triggers, we can uh, assign certain action towards. So let's assume, for example, a, event, a user joins an event. That's the trigger, and um, the the action assigned to it is send a notification. Or um, if the user to see in the gamification context, if the user moderates 20 posts and then this user gets a badge uh, which says moderator. But the action can be also not getting a badge, but the action for the same trigger could be also uh, gets more managing rights or is invited to a certain group or whatever. So the combination, um, combination of possibilities there are basically endless and are just limited by what the demand is. So, um, I, I, we split it. This will all run on the same engine. So the put over those triggers um, will have, uh, you can basically then hook into the system and really get insights into very specific actions people do and will allow you, users to, uh, or clients to, to see what is the community doing and in, in which way they're interacting. And the onboarding and engagement automation is basically part of the same system, but the onboarding is a sub part of the engagement automation. So onboarding, uh, we will focus uh, on, on, on helping and triggering more engagement and um, with, with this tool and focusing there first on the onboarding part, because we see for us that there's one of the biggest gaps at the moment that we don't take users um, by the hand when they join the community first and guide them towards certain points. Um, one of the things that we definitely want to do there is improving that people fill out their profile, leave more information, but also, for example, you can use the webhooks and triggering system for giving more information about certain interactions that you expect from the user when they reach pages the first time or when they have um, more, when they have more, um, uh, get more information if they get get to a page and don't do there anything for the X amount of time. So um, we are working there on a more detailed approach. Um, I think in the in a in a few weeks I will uh, create a, con uh, a topic about this in community talks to give a bit more insight about the precise user stories uh, because I can't go too much into the details that we don't unfortunately don't have the time for that today. But um, I hope it got a bit clearer where we're going with that. Um, to, uh, if you have any specific applications for that, um, I already talked to a few people about this. Uh, we're always happy to hear the input there. Um, we have a somewhat clear idea where we want to go with MVP triggers and actions based on some feedback we got from some people. Um, but if you have any specific use cases where you think like, oh, would be super relevant for our community to have uh, people reminded if they are joining an event two days before the event, uh, they get a reminder that this event is happening. This would be, for example, one of the triggers. Um, please let us know about those use cases and we can take it into account for, um, for, for the development of this. Um, this would be also definitely not a finished feature at the end of the, end of the um, quarter. We will be there, um, hopefully, that we have the architecture and that we have some basic um, triggers and actions that you can connect, but this will be expanded in the, in the future and the whole next year, I see. Um, so to come a bit more to the uh, uh, gamification part of it, we will separate this a bit. Also, it works with the same engine. Um, from a functional perspective, we want to remove it a bit from each other because the goal of it is really something different, right? Um, with the one, you set up triggers for certain actions that will have help uh, people to be reminded, to be to pull them back and so forth. And the gamification is, uh, for us, a tool to identify relevant users to and to motivate users to continue with what they're doing and re reinforce positive behavior. So um, you can see this thanks integration here. 
it, it's, it's, it's really uh, exciting what, what, what their plans are for it. It's also way bigger than only all social. Um, but for us, the important part here out of this will be um, primarily a leaderboard. So um, it will work with things if you're interested in blockchain um, and it adds a lot of opportunities to um, store more information about the user to decentralize um, um, the to decentralize the, um, the governance of uh, rewards, to decentralize um, governance of the community and so forth. But if that's not something uh, your organization or you are interested in, the whole system, gamification system, will also work without. And it's a bit of a simplified version then, but it still will add a lot of value. So the idea for now for an MVP of gamification will be to have a certain rule again trigger uh, action based system where you can say if a user does this and that action with this in this uh, amount of time or in this frequency they will get x amount of points or they will get a badge those will be the two reward systems at the moment and with this rewards for example with this point rewards they can um, you can then create a leaderboard that shows who of those people are the most active ones so primarily um, it obviously is a gamification system, but also it will help identify users that are um, really active in the community or users that add a lot of um, uh, add a lot of value that perform actions that you as a community manager see as valuable enough. Um, so you can also contact those people, or you can put them in charge of certain things, um, and 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 help create a super user base within the community. Um, also, the batch system will be connected to it partially. Uh, so, as I said, with we we we're gonna have a sort of challenge system where you can create multiple triggers um, and connect those triggers. So, for example, it's not that linear that you say, "Oh, 20 likes and you get X points." But you can also say, um, "Beginner moderator challenge," with that is time bound for a month. And then if you, in this month, you flag five types of content, answer to six posts, um, and two of those flag items get approved, then you will get this badge, for example. So um, again, we're going to start MVP there, have a very simple system with a few triggers, few actions um, that you can do. It's mainly about also here, as, as well as onboarding, as engagement automation, to create that uh, architecture to get ready for the future there and hopefully improve them in the, in the next time to come. Also with your input again, um, to see which are the most priority um, triggers, which are most priority action and, and where can we develop in this. Um, again, some more information will, be, will come available for this. There's a concept paper for things. As I said, you can also check out the things project uh, website for more information about the blockchain. Um, and in the next weeks or so, there's also next week, actually, there's going to be some more designs. Um, I can also post those to community talks. I will discuss with Jamila. I think a lot of things get more clear with those concepts. Um, um, gonna, I want to spend my last uh, few minutes on that extension topics um, for to discuss um, some more things that we're gonna do with some again um, uh, partners of ours. So, for example, you uh, and we're still gonna focus a bit more on the e-learning part, closing some gaps and the course module there, improving on the course statistics. And, and the quiz part to get more insights in it and to make it a bit more flexible on how it can be used. Um, in media, as I mentioned before, also an extension for the media will come. This will be primarily an extension. I think it would be valuable for all, most communities. But hosting videos on, site, on, the, on the community is adding just a lot of data, a lot of traffic, and a lot of infrastructure that needs to be, um, for now at least, outsourced. So this is with a third-party tool. But it, in theory, if you want to keep, con it's going to be GDPR conform. And if you uh, want to um, keep con complete control over your data, if you want to not use, for example, um, uh, YouTube, Vimeo, or other hosting platforms to embed it, this could be an option to use. And um, uh, it will obviously also allow then the access control of open source to take advantage of this. So long-term plans, I want to talk about two things. A, one, uh, 
or two future future features and initiatives for 2021. Um, it is obviously hard for us as, as there is a lot of input from a lot of different sides to really promise this. This is something that has priority for us. So please don't don't pin me down on this in half a year and say like, but you promised there's going to be feature X. And um, this is really for us. We're going to try to work on it, but um, it's not like fixed or scheduled or something. Another thing that is being worked on is decoupled. So I think um, a lot of you already heard, heard about it. There's a more information in the slides than I can cover now for time reasons if we still want to have some Q&A. Um, but I will quickly give an overview of what is decoupled and what our ideal is. So the goals of decoupled, in, in general decoupling means you're going to pull away the back end from Drupal um, from, the, from the front end. So there is a, at the moment, it looks like this, it's a monolithic uh, open social approach. So basically we have a database, we have code, and we have the front end uh, templates and styling all in, in one. And um, the, with a de the progressive decoupling approach, uh, we want to go to a fully decoupled system where you have the codes, uh, where, you, where you have the database, and with APIs, um, it, the information will be sent towards certain front end parts. So it can be a native app, it can be a mobile desktop, that can be whatever. Uh, all of those elements can be also interchangeable. The only thing that the front end does is create how it looks and pull in information via the GraphQL API that we are building from the database. This is going to be quite a process. Um, so the, we are doing this progressively. So that means we are focusing on certain parts of the platform where we see the biggest performance issues, <coughs> search, for example, or um, chat at the moment, and um, building this in this decoupled way. So pulling this part of the code out, uh, uh, pulling this part of the front end out, and building it in React and Reason, which is uh, lighter, which is more flexible, which allows us to fully uh, do our vision of how it should look like, how it should work like, where we are often just limited within the Drupal constraints, and feeding this front end how we want it to be with data via an API. So what are the goals of this? So it will greatly improve the performance. As I said, uh, React is way lighter, it's way faster. It's, it doesn't do the backend calculations within the front end parts and it just pulls in information. It will be more flexible in the front end and, and will uh, be easier basically to innovate because, um, and, and also to kind of customize in theory because the front end changes are not connected to the back end changes anymore. It's just about getting information via an API and translating them into the front end that you want it to. Uh, as a bonus, it's going to be uh, amazing for accessibility for third party tools via integrations because everything that is happening on Open Social will be exposed via the GraphQL API. So um, yeah, that's, that's definitely um, an, uh, uh, a, a big project. We're starting with the chat part here. So uh, Alexander and the, the, the um, decoupled team are currently working on a, on a real-time chat, which will probably come in a first version beginning of next year. Um, so we wanted to pick something that adds value as a feature, but also allows us to experiment a bit with it, to gain uh, knowledge about this, and to um, set the architecture and, and infrastructure for it. So. Um, from next year on as an extension, a real-time chat will be basically available that it does the same as the messaging does now, only in real time. That if there's no, no page load gonna be needed um, and people can just type in, send it, and the people uh, on the other end will immediately receive it. The next step, we are currently still figuring out what it will be. I, for me, to be honest, like my personal favorite would be search and overview pages. Because I think also there, it's quite old. It's one of the first things that we develop. It, for me, it feels like it could use a remake, and, and uh, it also sometimes is one of the slower parts. It's, it is one of the slower parts, parts of the uh, website. So um, I think it's a good candidate to profit from from a, from the uh, from a read. But um, yeah, so if you want to have more information about it, uh, go through uh, the information you have here. If you have any questions, 
as for everything else, please contact us. Here you can see currently the decoupled roadmap, as I said, uh, real-time chat, uh, chat uh, server automatic deployments, currently busy with the hosting. Um, accessibility is kind of related to that as it is in the front-end team. Um, and uh, yeah, design systems also related to it. As we are redoing the front-end, we are using Sky theme as a base, and we got a lot of input, um, also for example from Pachamama, uh, about improvements, about changes, and we are taking this into account when doing the front end in React. We're basically rebuilding it, so um, there, there's going to be uh, uh, hopefully uh, improvements there. Okay, last part um, is a bit the initiatives and outlook. Uh, so I split it up in initiatives and features. Um, so. I have mentioned most of this already before. So Drupal 9 uh, will be a priority 2021. Still, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a while, as I said. It's also because we're not only rely, like we cannot only rely on us, but we're also dependent on a lot of uh, contract modules that we're using on the Drupal community. We also want to take some time and give things back that we are doing and modules that we are co-maintaining. So um, this is just going to be an ongoing process. Same as automatic deployments, as I said. Um, it's more for us internally, but it is definitely something we're working on, more stable, more faster um, uh, updates. Also including multi-language uh, automatic deployments, so making sure that uh, the, all the different uh, language versions that uh, some of you have uh, are supported ideally, make it easier to have fixes and updates there. Um, we are working on, um, as I mentioned, just integrations and exposing of social. So webhooks is part of this. Um, the APIs is part of this with decoupled. So that's definitely going to be a, a, a big focus point for us in the next year. And um, continuous accessibility improvement. So as I said, it's not a checklist where you'll go once through and then you're like, yay, we're accessible. But it's an ongoing process. It's something we really have to work on. We have to continuously improve on, which we have to also take into account with every new feature that you develop. With every new feature, with every code change, you uh, introduce a possible, possible accessibility issue for, for people in the future. Also, there are still things, even if you reach double A standard, where you can improve on. We've seen really cool implementations of having floating buttons where people can say higher contrast, and it all comes black and white and removes color so that people with um, with really issues in differentiating contrast can, can, can access it, or uh, just increase the text size for things or something. So there's still a lot of room to grow. Um, some of the features that we that we already know, we really want to focus on. Um, one of the things is uh, payments. So um, that is something that we didn't really focus on at the moment. And that is a bit bigger than just adding a link to like a third party tool. But we, um, it, you can think about like paid memberships, event ticketing or something like this. Um, pro more project-based uh, entity could be also part of it where you can integrate payments. So um, it is like a really big thing that's probably going to be one of the focus points for 2021. Um, having projects as an extension as a feature and integrating payments in, in this um, to, to for fundraising, for um, yeah, connect, connecting different projects and helping out um, Get, getting the money for that. Um, as I already mentioned, reworking features will be a po focus point. Is something we're doing. Is something we're doing with decoupled. Also in the back end, though, um, I, I think one of the parts will be, as I mentioned already, search forms. We are currently busy with, but it's still also going to be ongoing next year. Groups will be still ongoing, as I mentioned. Uh, the transformation there will not be concluded in this quarter. Um, ideation is something that we probably put some focus on uh, somewhere next year. And um, yeah, so that is just something that we really want to focus on, taking the parts that we have and that also, even though, though they, um, they uh, fulfill their purpose, grow with them, improve them, putting them into um, the context of new things that we develop and connecting them. Um, uh, native app. We want to continue uh, moving forward with a uh, more native approach for the app. Um, we have some, uh, some clients already using our first versions of this. So um, 
um, that has, uh, definitely has been a journey the last year to develop this. Um, also for us, to be honest, uh, some new developments there, some new expertise that we had to acquire. Um, and uh, we, we were definitely going to continue that path. And um, yeah, we want to improve the flexibility for site managers. I also mentioned it in some ways already. Um, I think it's really important to give site managers a lot of tools at hand to fit communities really to their purpose. So think about presets in groups, for example, um, determining certain features in groups so that you can say this group has discussions, this group doesn't have discussions, or a group that needs events or doesn't need events. So really removing unnecessary parts of the group, making sure that um, even the group context, that the group context is even more um, like, like uh, focus on what you want to achieve with this group. Adding a, a landing page to a group that's customizable, that's not only the about page that we currently have, but really um, allowing more customization there. The landing pages that we have as a tool or the dashboard that we have as a tool, connecting this to groups, book pages can, could be connected to groups, things like that. So really making um, the tools that we have more accessible in certain contexts. Um, yeah. So th this is definitely something, the flexibility and reusability of different tools in different contexts is, is definitely something we want to focus on. Yes. Okay, so that was, um, I think, uh, I, I, a lot. <laughs> Felt like it for me at least. Um, I hope you could take away something useful here and may it be there is more documentation and stuff coming. Um, we still have at least five minutes for some questions. If you, I, I can, I have more time afterwards. If you want to, uh, if you can stay, if you want to know more, I can extend. Um, I want to say it before we're gonna come to questions. Again, thank you all so much for coming. Thank you for your attention. Um, and yeah, let, is there anything you want to know? Yes, definitely. This uh, presentation will be shared. Uh, Jamila will make sure that all of you get uh, get access to it, uh, as well to, to this as to the recording. Yes, Luca, go ahead. How do we do? Uh, hi, everyone. We just raise hands. We just unmute and speak. All right, I go. For it. Sure. Hi, it, it's so good to see you all. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Moritz. And thank you, Jamila. I have two questions one for you, Moritz, and one for Jamila. Uh, first one uh, about these community talks. Uh, it's all, all good that Pendo goes away. My question is as I'm a big fan of idea generation and upvoting and, uh, uh, and, and the voting from the community, do you foresee something similar in the new model based on community talks? Yeah, that that is a good question. Um, I, when I when I talked about um, re uh, like uh, not not reworking but improving on the ideation feature, so currently it is um, we developed it with uh, Foros together, um, basically digitalizing their um, crowd crowd innovation, their ideation process, and it is it works for really big questions for really long processes with uh, different phases, um, and and and. Uh, so I can foresee that we want to work on improving that feature um, into or making it a bit more flexible in regards of how fast those iterations are and, for example, not having it in different phases, but just upvoting certain questions. So answering a question, more or less, and choosing the best result of, of it in, in a more, in a, in a bit faster, not as structured way. And um, if we can do this, when this comes, I, I definitely see application for this in in uh, in community talks. With the current crowd innovation, we can think about uh, if we if we see some applications for that. Um, I, I I definitely can. Uh, but I um, as as Jamila mentioned, that we really want to get your input there. So there will be definitely parts where we ask for your feedback and your participation in the process also. Thank you. I'm going to quickly go to the second bit. You, you mentioned that, in the, that one of the core strategies was to connect with the open source community. How do you, uh, do you have any, any idea on how this is going to happen? I mean, I'm going to ask you and tell you why I'm asking this. Is this yeah. reasonable for us all one day to have access to the, uh, to touch the code base of open social to one of the developers that either volunteer with us or yeah. are part of our team and so on? 
Yeah, that's that that's that's definitely one of the one one of the um, points I was thinking about. So we're talking uh, to some other parties at the moment that are interested in contributing um, uh, or developing their own features. Let's say it like that. But we also are currently in con uh, we are constantly in contact with development partners, be it in it in Germany or with uh, Saudi Arabia or things like that, that develop their own modules, their own features, and that we want to that they want to give back to the open source community. So this is definitely one part of connecting. Uh, um, we can definitely see this. W one thing I can mention def here is though that we see ourselves as gatekeepers for this. So it's really important that we can maintain uh, quality, that we can make sure that it's developed in a standard that we think is acceptable, that works for our deployment strategies and so forth. So while obviously 90, 95% of open source is open source anyways and can be used and reused as the person sees fit to feed it back into the system it always has to go through us but we are more than happy to to uh, get into a dialogue with whoever whoever wants to contribute there. Um, so it's three uh, we're running out of time um, if there is are there any any more questions? Okay, so a um, few, few people already also dropped off. So then um, if there are no more questions, I um, again want to thank everybody for being here. Um, I, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you could take something away with it. Um, uh, you will hear from us more um, as a follow up from there, but also in the future more over community talks. I hope um, I see you all there back in the next uh, month and weeks to come. And um, yeah. yeah, thank you everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Yes, thank you so much. And like I said, uh, if you have any questions, you can also directly answer them on the video or the topic that we post if you want more insight. Uh, since here we're in time constraints uh, and it gives you more time to really think about it. Uh, now it was a lot of information. So think about it, take your time. And uh, like I said, we're all available on Community Talks to answer you as well as one of us. So. Have a wonderful day, guys, and thank you so much Bye. for joining. See you soon, all. Bye.